the spotted jacket of Stasolita. That's it, they're off and running in the arc. And away to a good start too. And on the outside, Stasolita, one of the first away, set sail, going very fast in the early stages. And up there too is Dare Me and Vision d'Etat. Just in behind them as See the Stars. Settles in a beautiful position, about fifth on the inside. One off the rail. Going forward now, Grand Ducal to put on pace. Further back is La Boom. And then on the outside is Cavalryman trying to get across. Further back in the field is Hume Zane, followed then by Getaway. And back there is Berestam Conduit. He's right there in the center in the light jacket well back in the field too in the early stages uh, at this stage is hot six followed then by a magadan and see the stars has just lost a little bit of ground there as they head down the side and uh, as they settle fully into stride it's grand ducal who's out in front by two lengths to stasolita who's got over beautifully in third is their conduit the outside from dare me in the pink jacket the inside beristam is further back in the field followed then in the center by fame and glory conduit behind them the light jacket then see the stars yellow and purple right there bang in the center followed then by getaway back in the field two at this stage out wide as magadan giving them a long start preceded by the bogri la boom then Hume zane smothered up on the fence but set sail with six furlongs to go is four or five lengths clear of the stable mate grand ducal then about eight lengths to stasolita dare me the outside cavalryman has got over close followed then by vision d'etat and these leaders are getting right away from them as they pass the thousand meter mark five furlongs from home further back is Beristam followed in the center by fame and glory and a nice posse they're followed then by back in the field of this stage conduit see the stars on the inside of runners and about sixth of that group that third group followed further back in the field then by hot six and the bogbury giving them a long start they race towards the turn in the arc and the leaders are a long way clear set sail and also on the outside the other one grand ducal they're about five in front now of stasolita he's getting up on the inside out see the stars he's got six or seven lengths to make up he'll have to be a champion stasolita races into the lead now two in front he is a champion i reckon he's got the run now in the center he's out after the leader he picks up stasolita he powers clear see the stars racing away perfection in equine form a horse of a lifetime he's just going to go on and win the arc by two lengths tight second Cavalryman, Hume Zane, conduit out wide. Behind them, Dare Me, Stasolita, further back then is Fame and Glory. Followed then by Tanker Speed, and they were followed by Vision Detar. Then La Boom, Magadan, then the Bogri behind them. Get away there. Berish well back. Talamore then, Grand Ducal, and Set Sail, and Steel Tango. But here they are crossing the line. See the star as they come now, and we see the winner there. See the stars. See the stars pulling up there, and there they are. See the stars. I said in the call he'd have to be a champion. He is, and Hume Zane looks like he has been second for the third time. Cavalryman on the inside, near side as Conduit. That's your one, two, three, four. Then in five is Dare Me. Then further back in the purple cap is the Irish Derby winner, Fame and Glory had every chance to the turn and they were followed then by on the inside stasolita and further back then is la boom followed further back by magadan vision data crossing the line quickly there's getaway the bogbury there's hot six tullamore and those leaders those two grand ducal and set sail they got so far ahead but Mick Canan, his third Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe victory, and on a horse of a lifetime, a horse who had to make up his ground. He did it so quickly. See the stars, a six to four on favorite, UK prices, and has paid five to four on on the Perry Mutual. Second Hume's aim at 20 to one, third Cavalryman at 12 to one. What a race. <laughs> 
that is one of the greatest sporting performances in any field in any part of the world that you will ever, ever see. And Willie Carson there offering his congratulations to the Ox team because it is the Chinese year of the Ox, but it is the year of See the Stars. What a performance. He pulled so hard early on. The pacemakers went so far clear. He lost his position. He had to angle out. He had to quicken. And we were watching thinking, no way, this can't happen. No horse can do this. Look at this again, because that was just an extraordinary, extraordinary well, performance. I was, I was very, very worried in the first two furlongs was after we'd gone a furlong up you could see Mick Canaan was having the old man he was having trouble getting his horse back getting him to settle he's such a cold horse yet when he jumps out of the stalls he comes alive and he pulls and and I thought then that he was going to use up too much petrol but Mick took him back got him relaxed and he was a little bit further back than possibly he wanted but he's got so much ability this horse could take the gaps when they appeared and that is the secret why the Mick has got to the front because he's got so much petrol in the tank a great great horse we've just seen things haven't gone right for him and he has still won the race Incredible. There's applause here in the paddock for Yumzane, who finishes second for the third year in a row and runs another amazing race in the arc. He saves his best form for here. But this is a complete superstar, and he has been handled with so much patience and so much excellence by John Ox, his trainer. Unbelievable. Unbelievable to keep a horse on the go at Group 1 level Did and he? to keep improving, because I think that's an improved performance there is John Ox now he had to have been worried in the first well, as you we were. all were worried but and you went over to offer your congratulations Kath, yeah no, she's in tears oh yeah. brilliant that's Absolutely. Mick's wife well I think Mick must be getting close to it now um, uh, well <clears throat> I'm a bit out of breath myself thinking about things I don't think he hit him with a stick did he he gave him a belt when he got to the front just to make sure but what a nice good ride Mick and Anne you know, on the big day, he's absolutely brilliant. He was in a horrible position. He knew the pacemakers are coming back. And he just oh, he did hit him there. Time. Yes, he did hit him. And he won't um, go away. Oh, what a lovely horse. Um, but this, this thing about him coming out the stalls and going like a... He, he attacks the race like a sprinter. We can see the reaction here of John Ox. We saw the emotion that he feels for this horse and the piece that Rishi did with him. And he is, you know, he's not a man who jumps and shouts and gets excited, but my word, this means the world. This horse means the world to him. Well, I'm a, I think we've possibly seen one of the best horses ever to... Possibly? Be, well... Take the possibly no, out. That's his owner, Christopher Choi. We may have seen the greatest ever. We've definitely seen one of the greatest. And it's probably the best trainer performance ever. To keep this horse on the go all year, he said it's very hard for three-year-olds from the spring right up until now to keep them sweet and happy. Definitely. And he's done a marvellous job. Oh, there he is, a very proud man, happy man. There's an even happier person uh, saluting the crowd, which is not in Mick's normal demeanour to do this sort of thing. He's very calm on, and w when he wins big races and he keeps his emotions to himself. But there you go, there's a little bit of a... Relief. Run yeah, <laughs> relief. There's uh, the, the young owner, the 29-year-old. 27. 27-year-old. Mick Canaan showing his emotions. I I love the comment from Mick Canaan when he said when he first sat on this horse, I couldn't believe my luck that I was sitting on a horse as good as this in 49th year. Well, let's hear from the winning trainer John Ox as we wish him. John, how's your heart? Uh, still beating fairly slowly, I think. What? <laughs> you must be joking. But uh, it's, it's just a great relief, you know. It's, it's wonderful that it's over and that uh, he's come through it. He had a nice position. He was always travelling strongly. Uh, he, had a bit of, he, had a, he had to have the gears to get out. You right, know? John, you're making it sound so easy because I was watching with many experts, racing experts. They were going, they were going insane, saying, Where's, what's he going to do? How's he going to get out there? Everyone was panicking. Yeah, well, you see, Mick wouldn't panic because uh, this horse has the gears. You know, that's what any jockey will tell you. If, the horse has the speed and the gears, uh, he'll get himself out of trouble. So, uh, you know, we were we were not too alarmed at any stage. Racing legend. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well done, John. Go and welcome him. Thank you. Yes, he is a racing legend. He goes into the <clears throat> Roll of Honour beside Rebo, Seabird, 
Dancing Brave, Mill Reef. A great performance.